We are Andy, Melissa, Jack and Oliver. For the past three years, we've been working towards becoming a full-time liveaboard sailing family. Last month, we finally moved aboard our Bowman 46 Ocean Melody, an ocean-going blue water classic yacht from 1974, which we found neglected in a yard for 10 years and have been bringing her back to life. We've now moved aboard and achieved our first goal of becoming full-time liveaboards, and we're currently preparing Ocean Melody to set off on a very slow sail to everywhere and nowhere. While Andy's away, I'd like to get on with a few little boat jobs. One of the things that I like to do in the morning when I get up is open the hatches, let some more light into the boat. But because it's raining and it's cold, um, I can't always do that. So I want to cut some, um, we've got some polycarbonate, I think it's polycarbonate, Lexan um, scraps that we've got left over from another project. So I want to cut those to the hatchboard shape, which also means that I can spend some time, sa uh, another time, sanding and varnishing the hatchboards. But it just means that I can drop them in, we can have two sets of boards, one clear ones to let light in and one not clear, wooden, <laughs> they're stronger, um, well they're probably not even stronger but they're the right size, they're the right balls so some wooden ones and some clear ones but mostly for the purpose of letting light into the boat. Jack, Ollie and I have actually been out all morning um, helping our friend Danny launch her boat so I just want to say a massive well done to Danny, she launched her boat all on her own after um, some time on the hard and rudder repairs and all sorts of exciting stuff she's been up to and I just wanted to say I'm very proud of you Danny, well done. So these are the two washboards that are in need of some desperate love. Started removing the varnish off these so they will come up nice. Yeah so my plan was to cut these into two pieces but then I realised because this um, Lexan is thinner than the boards. If I cut two pieces basically I'll put them on top of each other and then as soon as the wind blows they'll just slide down. For now I need to just cut it into one big hatch board um, and then make, I suppose I've got to make like a wooden thing to either build it out so it fits in the hatch so they can sit on top of each other or like a lip, like a, a border. Huge fish. Made me jump, jumped out the water. Like the lock Let's See if I've just basically wasted a big piece of plastic or whether my theory is gonna work. It's a bit wet. Needs a good clean.
and you can't see in really that's good I'm gonna go and look from inside let's have a look right so that is oh gosh the boat's a mess that's it from the inside obviously the GoPro is doing its thing and kind of making up for the lack of light so let's have a look right hatch dark gloomy wake up in the morning and it's raining this is how it goes and I'm like and then that's me in a bad mood for the whole day because I can't get more light in the boat but now I can do this I can get rain done but I can go get rid of you I'm not that happy. <laughs> I need to clean it. It's a bit um it's got sticky stuff on it. But that is gonna make my mood so much happier through the winter. So much better. <laughs> One job down. Okay, so conditions have been less than ideal all day. It's been pouring, like pouring with rain all day. Uh, the rain has finally stopped, uh, and I just didn't feel like doing this in the chucking down rain, because just walking in and out of the shed in wet clothes is gonna bring too much kind of splashes and moisture into the, into the work area. But now the rain has stopped, I can actually get on with some work. The only trouble is now it's half past three in the afternoon and we're British autumn, so we're, daylight is short. But I'm gonna get cracking and I'm gonna just try to do one simple thing, which is mix up some thickened epoxy and do the fillet around the edge of the grab rail. Now, as you remember, we got, there was a packing error with the original order and we got the uh, wrong hardener. They have now sent us the correct hardener um, for that, so that's good, but, um, and they've also sent us this wood fill 250 which is the um, strong thickener so you mix up the epoxy you mix up epoxy you mix up you mix up the mox i'm having no we're all right nothing neurological going on here you mix up the epoxy and the hardener you tip a load of this in until it's kind of the consistency of thick cream or peanut butter and then go around it and then to i'm going to apply it with a spreader and then to get the radius so i've taken the handle off my um wood vice uh, and that looks like it will make quite a nice either that side or that side I'm not sure yet should make quite a nice smooth a radius all the way around the edge let's get going so that's like the consistency and colour of peanut butter which is pretty much spot on I think. One thing I'd like to point out is that this fiddle is designed to catch water but I will be installing drains in specific places with hose attachments to take the rainwater out to our tanks and the solar panels will be mounted on some stainless brackets to keep them slightly off the fiberglass and to enable them to be tilted for a better angle to the sun and to facilitate cleaning underneath them so I've got no concerns about the roof getting flooded and the solar panels or the wiring sitting in water. And of course, if the drains can't keep up with the average rainfall, it's very easy to add some more so we won't ever have rainwater sitting on the roof. Good grief, that took longer than I expected. Right, I'll show you what I've done. Um, I've done an epoxy, thickened epoxy fillet all the way round, which is exactly what I said I was going to do and then I've used the um, lollipop stick, the stirrer stick with a rounded end to, bevel, uh, to smooth it off. I've used a, uh, a round handle off one of my planes to have smooth it off and then a glove finger just to take off any excess. This is all going to be glassed over so it's kind of moot point really anyway. It's really just to strengthen the corner um, 
but I, I'm to kind of give it a bit of a smoother transition for the fiberglass cloth so it's not sitting into a sharp 90 degree bend. Um, that's all it's there for really. You're not really going to see this at all. But let, let me show you. So there you are. That, sorry about the light. It's so dark in here. Uh, but that's what I've done. Now I don't know if that fillet has got enough of a radius, but I think it has. It's pretty beefy. But I'll let it settle overnight. And if tomorrow morning I think mm, it's a bit too much of a shallow curve, then I can always beef it up a bit, can't I? Now, as I've explained, what's going over the grab rail and into that corner, both the internal 90 degree and over the top of the handle, is some lighter weight cloth than the biax that we're using. So uh, I think it'll cover those radiuses and stuff absolutely fine. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem. We'll see, I suppose, if I cock it up or not. The fillet around the edge is dry and I'm completely happy with it. There's a couple of areas that I might just sand off very slightly, but it's rock hard and it's a nice radius so that the cloth doesn't have to kind of fit into that 90 degree. I've got two choices today. I can either glass cloth the center piece or I can glass cloth the grab rail. But at the moment, the shape of this is being pulled down into shape by uh, some um, garden twine with penny washers and big and dowels and wound tight so it's down tight onto the frame. And I, don't, I can't release these until it's holding its own shape. So I'm wondering, if I glass cloth the whole centre section, I've got to cut holes in the glass cloth to be able to get these back out. I don't want to glass over them. And Andy reckons, I've spoken to Andy today, Andy in this room way, but uh, I've spoken to Andy today and he reckons, actually, the best thing to do would be to go around the edge because once the grab rail is all really solid, rigid, rigidly kind of fixed, it should hold its shape. I should be able to take all of these off. And then also, I haven't got any holes in it because by glass cutting the top, it'll fill the holes from the bits of wire. Of course, we're going to drill more holes in it later to, uh, to mount it and stuff. And I've got a cunning plan for that, which you're going to have to wait and see what my plan is for that. But coming back to that. So yes, I think I'm going to do the glass cloth around the grab rail around the edge. And for that, we need a different sort of cloth. Let me just talk to you about cloth, or, I mean, I don't know much about this stuff. I'm very new to fiberglassing, as you may have realized. But I'm gonna show you what, what I'm using on the advice of the guys at Matrix and, and also Matt from Duracell Project and everybody else. So this is the stuff that we're using for the main fiberglassing and it's fiberglass cloth on one side which is a 45 degree weave but on the other side it's like chopped strands so it's kind of matting on one side and cloth on the other and that gives it enormous amounts of strength but it does mean that it's probably a bit more tricky to get it to lay into these corners well that looks pretty good anyway what I've been advised to do around the edge is to use this stuff this is the fiberglass cloth that I'm going to be using for over the grab rail. It's lighter weight than that. It's basically, it's almost like it's the top half of that, but without the thicker stuff underneath. So it's a single layer. And that will wrap more easily around the edges and into the corners. And then of course, we're going to use the peel ply again on top of that. So I'm going to try to, I'm not very good with it, but I'm going to try to, I've cut myself as well. I'm going to try to use the peel ply over the top um, to suck out the excess uh, epoxy and uh, give a nicer finish to the whole job which will mean less sanding, less kind of fettling and that kind of stuff at the end. So for now the peel ply can go to one side, this uh, biaxial chopped strand 1708 stuff can go to one side uh, and I can mix up some epoxy. Now, I'm going to do the same, I didn't actually check with Matt if I approach this in exactly the same manner, but I assume I do, which is to mix up some slightly thickened epoxy first, lather that all on, and then go over in the glass cloth. In actual fact, I think my first thing that I'm gonna do is go over all of this with the disc sander to, um, 
to kind of clean it all up and make sure that any bits like this, you probably can't see, but little ribs and ridges and everything are all as good as I can get them before I go in with the fiberglass. So, first little bit then is sanding. happy with that I've um, sorry about the visibility guys it's uh, it's still kind of spitting with rain out there and we're drying under cover in here what I would like to do is uh, take this outside and carry on with it but there's two reasons why I can't one is uh, it's too big for me to move my own because I've just been and fetched the tube bender back that was used to um, to roll uh, the front corners of the um, of this frame and so I've driven to Manchester and back to fetch it this morning. Uh, and I've, uh, on the way back, I got a flat tire and then I had to lift the tube bender out the back of the car on my own to get the spare wheel out. And it weighs an absolute ton. So I've, I've wrenched my back doing that and uh, I can't move this outside on my own. Uh, anyway, whinging over, there's, that's one reason. And the other reason is it's spitting with rain. And if it starts to really chuck it down, I can't move it back in here quickly. And I don't want this to get wet. But I can work in here, it's just not great filming in here. Um, so I'm pretty, pretty happy. Uh, I think we've got all of this profiling nice. Now I don't have enough experience with fiberglassing work to know whether the fiberglassing will cover over um, little tiny imperfections or whether it will highlight little tiny imperfections. If it's anything like paint, uh, you know, you have to get the surface prep is absolutely critical to get right because if you have any little imperfections in your surface and then you or your primer, uh, that's just going to stand up like a sore thumb when you spray your top coat on. But I don't know if this stage of the build is like that. So I don't know how far to go with the surface prep. Um, what I will say is once this is done, I'm going to be spraying it with high build filler primer and uh, doing more surface prep on top of the fiberglass. So I think I could, I could keep going forever and, and uh, somebody like Matt might say, no, 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 stop, you've done enough, that's fine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just tidy up a few more little bits and then start getting the glass cloth on around this grab handle because it feels nice. You know, I'm going around it with my eyes closed and it feels okay all the way around. And um, sometimes that's a good, a good uh, metric for it is does it look right but does it feel right as well and it does you know it feels nice there's no sharp edges there's no sort of big blobs of anything sticking out that are going to catch anybody so I think I'm just I'm, I'm procrastinating now because I'm a bit worried about this stage of the build and I shouldn't be I should just get on with it so get on with it Okay, right, the glass cloth is all around the side, the peel ply is all around the side, um, and of course while I was doing that, uh, the camera battery ran flat, so I'm on my phone, but that's okay. Um, have a look at this, I'm not sure how much of that you can see. This is peel ply, you see, and I, you leave a little bit over there so you can rip it off. Um, and all that does, as we've explained, is give a, a um, it sucks out the excess uh, epoxy, uh, it gives a nicer finish so that there's less prep work afterwards. Uh, there's nothing else I can do on this now 
um, other than walk away and stop fiddling with it. Because the more I fiddle with it, the more I'm going to introduce problems. And the epoxy is now starting to gel over. Um, so I'm going to stop for a bit. I have to go back to the boat to Melissa and Ollie and Jack for a few days. Um, and then I need to come back to continue with this um, and get some TIG welding done, yay. Uh, because the frame's all made, as you've seen, and it's all fully welded. But what I want to do, as I've said, is grind over those, those MIG welds and go over them with the TIG. Right, anyway, enough waffle. Uh, I'm going back to the boat now for a bit. I was a bit annoyed that the, um, the window was all scratched that I just made. Um, but I've discovered that there's film on it. There's me, I'm cleaning it, scrubbing it, trying to get the marks off. And I just needed to do that. Ooh, that's satisfying. Looks like ASMR, is it? Oh, I'll try it again. Hang on. <laughs> now it looks like there's nothing there. Oh, that looks so good, Mum. That's a full on proper window. <gasps> Happy. Look at that. Look. That's going to let loads of light in. So I need to make some um, wooden, um, like a wooden shim that goes all the way along there that I can stick on there. Holly's playing the drums in the background. Sorry. Sorry. And then all the way along there. But. It's, it's not, it will rattle when it's really windy, um, but that's an easy enough job. I just need to get some wood and stick it down there, get some beading. That's what I need, beading, beading. Oh, I'm really pleased with that. <laughs> I can sit and look outside, I can be nosy. <laughs> Clear up the mess now. I've been working on when the kids go to bed um, and when I'm like just making tea and stuff like that is a what is it? It's a, a fruit basket. Thank you, Jack. It's a fruit basket, a fruit hammock um, that's going to obviously I need to mount some things, but it's going to hang from here to here um, because. I've got nowhere to store my fruit and vegetables. Vegetables. Um, so that's what I'm working on. And it's quite relaxing when I'm feeling frazzled. Mm -hmm. to um, get some a hook to go on here and then make something to go on the other side so I can't use it yet well I might be able to hang I'll find somewhere I can hang it for now um, but uh, let's find a potato to demonstrate oh honey Potato. 
Here is my hammock and it will hold bed. I haven't cut this bit down so I can actually make this a bit tighter if I need to. Um, and it's going to go across here, I think, like that. So, just made that. Finished that while Ollie was having a nap and now he's awake. Didn't have a long enough nap, so he's not happy. So the rest of the day is going to be fun. Let's see what other boat jobs we can get done, Ollie. You're not going to let me do any today, are you? We need to empty the dinghy. And I really, really, really want to paint the ceiling in the heads. It's a bit wonky, but it's up for now. I need to, as I say, um, put a epoxy a hook up there. But it feels like a proper boat. Now I've got vegetables in a net. Thanks so much to Matt from Duracell Project for his advice and help. Thanks to Andrew and Liz for opening their home and their hearts and giving us such amazing support and practical help. As always, thanks to our amazing patrons for your continued support. We couldn't be doing this without you. If you want to become a patron, go to patreon.com forward slash sailing melody. We'd like to have welcome aboard our new patrons, Neil, Andrew and Rachel Lamb and Kevin Perkins. 